Manchester United is seen as the front runners to sign Victor Oshiman as the price for the Nigerian striker has been set at around 132 million pounds, around 150 million euros and 132 million pounds. We're going to delve into this story, look at a big blow for Arsenal with William Saliba and take a look at the claim that Man City are underdogs this season. Of course, we're sponsored again by our friends at One Football, the best one-stop shop for all your football news, stats, live match scores. There's also free Serie A football on that app as well for you. Scan the QR code on my screen now or click on the link in the description to get that downloaded. Our sponsors are important if you want all this content to continue. So please go and get that downloaded for us right about now. But Victor Rushman, a lot of Man United fans want him. A lot of Man United fans see him as a, a better alternative to Harry Kane. They see him as a, a younger, faster, fitter, more able player in many ways. I don't think anybody thinks he can pass the ball and can play make as well. But they definitely look at the age, the physicality, the athleticism of Victor Rushman and think, well, we could have a player for five plus years scoring goals and helping us win major titles. The story that's come out today from Italy states here, and I'll read, that Man United are more determined uh, in their choice of Victor Oshman than their rivals. Oshman has been in fine form for Napoli this term, scoring 26 goals in 31 appearances in all comps. That's actually phenomenal. Uh, you know, only 31 games played and has attracted interest from some of Europe's top clubs. Chelsea and Manchester United are both in desperate need for a striker this summer, uh, with clubs linked with a number of number nines around Europe. Paris Saint-Germain are also set to join the Premier League pair, uh, pair over the course of the summer. Now, according to sources in Italy via Sports Witness, Man United hold an advantage over Chelsea. Although it is reported Chelsea will offer a bigger wage to Victor Rushman over a longer period of time than Man United, because they're set to miss out on European football in any capacity, Manchester United are reportedly the front runners. It goes on to state that any party interested uh, will have to present an offer that cannot be refused. Very, very, very godfather um, to the to the Napoli owner, and it is believed the price will be around 150 million euros, aka 132 million pounds for the 24 year old. Now, my question for a lot of you is: Do you think that that is a fair price? Do you? That is the first question I'm going to pose. And I know a lot of people will look at it and say it's too much money. For me, it really isn't. It really isn't because this guy is he's a prolific goal scorer. Goals are the hardest skill in football. They're the hardest attribute to be consistently good at in football. And this man appears to be an individual that is able to do that. Putting that ball into the back of the net is the difference between being third in the league, how Man United are now, and being in this title race. We've seen how important G8 is just last night. If Bayern Munich had a player that had the ability to get great world-class levels of GA, they might have been able to at least compete with Man City in the tie rather than get battered 4-1. Chelsea wouldn't be sitting 12th in the Premier League if they had a player or two in their attacking line who was good at producing GA, actually had some output and some end product. So but I don't actually necessarily think £132 million is overpriced in 2023. Of course, from a socialistic, a moral standpoint, working class people like you and like I, 132 million pounds is a colossal amount of money. But in the world of football, essentially when you're transferring an asset from one business to another, one team to another, in a multi-billion pound industry, it's, it's not too much money. It's the going rate. So I'm not against it per se. There's talk that, that if Man United do go for Harry Kane, you're looking at between 80 to 100 million. It stands to reason that a younger player with a much longer potential timeline at your football club is going to cost you exponentially more money. I do think Harry Kane is a better striker. He is my preferred choice. I think he just brings a little bit more to us. However, with Victor Rushman, you get a different type of individual. Still a prolific goal scorer, a predator in the box but you do get that speed. The one thing with Harry Kane is he won't be great on the transition in the same way that Victor Rosherman would be. He'd be good, but not as great. 
So I think they both have pros and they both have both have cons. The most important thing for Manchester United, though, is getting in that new striker. And I do hope that this story from Italy today is true, that we are the most determined and that we're most likely because we need a prolific world-class number nine up front. There's no doubt. Now, moving to North London, of course, there's been a lot of talk recently around William Saliba. Is, it, what, is he, is he going to return this season? There was video footage this week of him training. There now is a report here on One Football that says that Arsenal boss Mikel Arteta um, has revealed that the defender William Saliba is not progressing from the back injury as well as Gunners had hoped. Saliba picked up the inj injury in their defeat to Sporting Lisbon in mid-March with the French international substituted during the game. Arteta told reporters ahead of their game with Southampton on Friday. That's tomorrow, depending when you're watching this. Um, not big news. The picture hasn't changed since last week with Saliba. He hasn't progressed as much as we would have hoped. We would, sorry, we want uh, to be very certain when we push him, um, when we pushed him that he is ready to absorb the load but with the risk that it would take um, at the moment that is not possible to do. Probably next week, will be a little bit more certain. He is not ready yet uh, to throw him onto the pitch and compete with the intensity demanded in this league. He says on Shinchenko, he says, uh, we are not um, certain. It's a muscular injury, needs time to heal. So at the moment, it looks like Saliba and Zinchenko will miss both the Southampton game and potentially the big title, maybe title deciding game between them and Manchester City that takes place next Wednesday. That is a big blow for Arsenal. I don't think anybody can deny that. Anybody can play that down. Two of their most influential players, two members of their core, two players are almost guaranteed to start when they're out. With Holding and Kiarantini coming in, that's half of their defence. They play out from the back Arsenal. And the difference in quality, the drop-off in quality from Zinchenko and Saliba to holding and Tierney in terms of progressing that ball from the back is night and day. Defensively, I do think there's an argument. Some 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 Arsenal fans disagree, but I do think that Kieran Tierney is a better defender than Zinchenko. But Arsenal can't play their brand and their style of football with as much fluidity and ease as they do when he's in the team. The holding and Saliba conversation, I don't think we need to actually have that because we know the score. We know the score. We know what direction this is going in. We we we, we don't need to like shit on holding and, and be disrespectful to him. Um, and Arsenal fans certainly won't want to hear that anyway. But Saliba is just absolutely clear. But this is a big blow. Do I think they'll get the win over Southampton without both these players? Yes, I believe that Southampton, the worst team in the country, is at the Emirates. I'm not saying it's going to be a walk in the park because I think there's going to be some pressure upon Arsenal when they walk out on that field. But they're going to get the job done. It's the game against Manchester City on Wednesday where the problems are going to arise if these two are not fit. And I actually think there's a train of thought to suggest risk them both for the Man City game. Risk them both maybe for that Manchester City game because losing it, I think in most people's minds, ends a title race. And unless you disagree, and you think, actually, if we go into that game playing players that aren't 100% and lose, and then, then, and then they get injured, win, even if you win, and then, and then they get injured because of it longer term, maybe that's more detrimental. Maybe it's about letting them find their feet and come back slowly. This is all, among, uh, this is all surrounding as well, the situation with Saliba, where I've heard rumours that he's going to be out for the season, but Arsenal just don't want to announce that because they don't want to send like, a shot of negativity across the bow, as it were. But we'll see. We'll see. I mean, they're talking like he's a week away from coming back, but that kind of talk has been circulating for a while now. I would love your thoughts and feelings on it. What should they do for the City game? Risk them or, or not? And without them, do you see Arsenal being able to win the league? I really want to get your take. I really want to harness and understand your opinion on this. Remember, as I said at the top of the show, to scan the QR code and download one football. Make sure that is getting done. Now, I did see today one of the most interesting tweets I've ever come across in football. And this tweet here said that Pep Guardiola just knocked out six times European champions by Munich with, the, with, UFC, with, with 
UCL Virgin City. Up next, 14 time winners Real Madrid in the semi final. Luke goes on to say if he pulls this, the unthinkable off and wins the Champions League, it will be the greatest underdog story in his, sporting history. I mean, it has to be a parody. Surely it's a parody. It's not real. But there are a lot of Man City fans that kind of push this notion of we're underdogs. We're not favorites. Why should we be expected to win? We don't have any heritage. We're a small club. Is this, a, 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 is this them trying to do some reverse psychology, in your opinion? Or do some of them believe this? Or do some of them believe, like reverse psychology because they don't want pressure on them? Or is this an element of, maybe some believe it. But what I really think it is more than anything else is this, everybody nowadays tries to over elevate their, their, their achievements. Even if their achievements are great, everybody wants to make it better than great. I see fans do this all the time. Oh, you think we're good, Terry? Yeah, I think you're really good. Why don't you think we're the best ever, though? Okay. That's the kind of notion that you get from youngsters. You get it from a lot of people. Oh, I think you've done a really good job. Is it not the greatest job you've ever seen ever in the history of jobs? No. And maybe that's what this is. Maybe it's Man City fans trying to over elevate their achievements and make them into a Disney story. City is not a Disney story, by the way. It really isn't. They got taken over by a billionaire. They've been run very, very well. They've been building up now for the best part of 15, 16 years to this point. They've spent as much money as anybody. Like, got to remember, they've outspent Man United. Man United, the richest club, one of the richest clubs in the world. They've outspent us in, in, in what we've spent in, in 40, 50 years. They've done in 15 years. That's not a dig. It's their money. They're entitled to spend it. But don't come with this underdog story like life was hard. It reminds me of it when everybody was trying to celebrate one of the Jenners or Kardashians becoming a billionaire. They were like, oh my God, the youngest billionaire ever. It's like, I would back myself. If I had one of the most famous families in the world and billions of pounds in the bank and hundreds of millions of pounds debt given to me to start a business, if I didn't turn that business into a billion dollar industry, I would call that failure. That's kind of what City are doing here, but maybe that's just me. I want your thoughts and I want your feelings, people. Listen, subscribe to The Terrace. Make sure you're downloading our sponsor's app one football it is truly truly sensational if you haven't got it already you'll be like I, 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 what am i doing if you haven't if you haven't updated it for a while scan our qr code get it updated get it downloaded until next time take care goodbye god bless and i'll see you all again soon peace